Hey everyone, I'm related to someone really cool. Well, you are too, I'm sure, if you dig back far enough. I think we all are. However, today I'm going to tell you about the life of Delos Thurman Bly, the first detective of the city of Louisville, Kentucky. D.T. Bly was born in Delaware County, New York, in a village called Franklin. Today it's still a very small place, so I'm sure back then it was a little smaller than today. Um, he grew up there, and when he was 16, he moved to Pennsylvania and became a bricklayer. And then a few years later, he decided he wanted to move west to the shining, hopeful metropolis of St. Louis. However, his steamboat stopped in Louisville, and he decided to stay there. And he lived there for the rest of his life. He was a bricklayer again in Louisville, and then he became the night watchman at the dock on the Ohio River, um, which was his first foray into the type of work he'd be doing for the rest of his life, kind of like security, police, crime-stopping work. Um, he was part of this, like, guard of Louisville, like, kind of like a police force, but also military-related, and that is how he got sent to the Mexican-American War, where he got the rank of captain. Now, my sources are kind of shaky on this. In fact, my sources are shaky on a lot of this. I'm just going to tell you, like, essentially what I absolutely know. Um, anyway... Um, one place that I read said that he was just kind of like stationed in Kansas at some fort. And another thing that I read said that he was on the front line and somewhere in Texas and got wounded in battle and, you know, kind of kind of was a some degree of war hero. Um, I don't know what to believe. I do know for sure that he was a captain in the Mexican-American War and he was Captain Bly. After the war, he went back to Louisville and continued doing general, like, police-type work, and eventually he became a detective. The mayor of Louisville decided to take four people and turn them into the first detective force, the first in investigative branch of the city of Louisville. Later, it was winnowed down to just two people, Captain Bly and one of his friends. It's during this detective part of his life that a lot of the legend comes into play. You see, Bly lived in what's called the Victorian era, and in the Victorian era, people like to make things up. They like to embellish stories, they like to create heroes, and that shows in the writings about D.T. Bly, and even a little bit in how people in my family have talked about D.T. Bly. Obviously, I've heard about him for a while, and how interesting he was and how important he was in the city of Louisville and the, some of the crazy things that he did. But for the purposes of making a video on the internet, I'm going to try to stick to things that I can find proof of and that are <laughs> believable, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so Bly is a detective, right? He's also freaking huge. He was six foot two, over 200 pounds. Um, and that way, I kind of take after him. But um, that kind of makes it hard for him to be a detective. So he had a lot of disguises that he would use to, um, you know, sneak around and, and follow people and see what they're doing and um, catch the bad guy. Um and one of the bad guys that he had a hand in catching was Jesse James. In fact, Captain Bly was the first detective to actively pursue the Jesse James gang. And he actually wrote a letter damning Jesse James to the legislature of the state of Missouri. So, here's what happened here. What had happened was... Alan Pinkerton, who was the detective in Chicago, 
was also trying to catch Jesse James. And in some way or another ended up bombing Jesse James's mom's house in Chicago and killing Jesse James's brother-in-law. That was kind of, you know, aggressive and what we would call today uh, an overuse of force. And the state of Missouri was like, oh man, I mean, you don't know that he's done anything wrong. You could have the wrong guy. And they were going to grant amnesty to Jesse James. However, in swoops Captain Delos Thurman Bly, writing a letter to the Missouri legislature, telling them that, listen, I've been following this guy for a while. This is a list of convicted criminals that he is associated with. This is a bank robbery that I saw him at. He needs to go to trial. Please don't grant him amnesty. And Jesse James res and Missouri did not grant him amnesty. I don't know if this letter was the only thing that made that happen, but I would like to imagine that it's the only thing that made sure that that happened. And Jesse James responded to this by writing a letter to the press in the cities of Louisville, St. Louis, and Nashville, slandering D.T. Bly saying that he was a bad detective and a liar, and that he just had it out for him. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jesse James never really got to be brought to justice. He was killed by one of his own gang members after the gang had been mostly torn apart by the efforts of Bly, Pinkerton, and I'm sure other detectives all over the nation. So that was one of the cool things that, that D.T. Bly did. Um, the other more interesting thing is he solved some counterfeit currency schemes. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, one was for America, one was for India, and one was for the United Kingdom itself. I know India was part of the United Kingdom, but that's what my source said, so maybe they used different currency back then? I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but what I do know is that apparently, because he solved this for the UK, he got to go over and meet Queen Victoria herself. And apparently, supposedly and supposedly, there's a portrait of D.T. Bly in Buckingham Palace or somewhere royal in England. And I would love to go see that, like to prove that he actually went there and like there's a portrait of him. Uh, most interesting, like I'm most interested in that because... A, it was a portrait commissioned by the Queen of England of my great-great-great-great-grandfather. Two, is all of the images of him that I found are just, like, sketches or lithographs. Like, there's no photographs. Like, photo photography existed when he was alive, and he was an important person. You'd think that they would have taken a photo of him, but they've either just, like, not been documented, or there never were any. So... It'd be cool to see his likeness in color and in something other than what looks like a pencil sketch. <laughs> and here is where we start stepping away from things that I can talk about and give links to and start stepping into things that are kind of legend. You see, in my family, there's this little conspiracy theory that while Bly was in England, Arthur Conan Doyle was just beginning to write Sherlock Holmes. And wouldn't it be interesting if my great-great-great-great-grandfather was the inspiration for Sherlock Holmes? I don't think he is. I think that's a load of baloney. But if it, it, that'd be, that's like a fun thing to think about. Like every time you see anything, you know, like um, the great mouse detective from that older Disney movie that nobody really talks about except for my wife. Um, the House series, that's based on Sherlock Holmes. Um, anytime that anyone says, elementary, my dear Watson, like, that exists because of the same reason that I exist. That's fun to think about. A lot of these legends about D.T. Bly are best found in his obituary. While it is the the best source that's um, contemporary with him. It's not the most reliable source because it's 
written with a lot of typewriter. There's a lot of stuff in there that's like flowery language. Obituaries were bought by the word back then. It was a status symbol to have a long obituary, and I'm sure everyone in Louisville was expecting him to have a long obituary. And it's it's definitely not made for it education about somebody's life it's definitely made for entertainment so i'm gonna link that in the description for your entertainment uh please enjoy thinking about dt Bly and what he did as an individual in his life is fun and it's really interesting to think about you know the the people who protected america's frontier from lawlessness in a time when information was not as easily shared or obtained. It's really interesting to think about how a detective in the 1800s did their job. And even more interesting when they did things that were notable in, in history, arguably. But what I like to think about is what would it be like to talk to him? I mean, there's technically only five people in between me and D.T. Bly, but there's 108 years between when he died and when I was born. And that's a very eventful gap. So, first let's consider what it would have been like to live his life. You go from your childhood in the mid-1800s, everything is being pulled by horses. Everything is a gas lamp. Um, it takes days, weeks, months to get across America to the end of his life when you can get across the nation by train, coast to coast. And I looked it up. He would have seen the first electric lights in Louisville in 1881. He would have been in his late 50s when electricity was introduced to a major city like that's so cool like ah uh, we will never i mean we'll experience things like that but we could never imagine that everybody alive today has interacted with a light switch <laughs> from infancy <laughs> so the thought of like the technology that he watched um grow in the he lived through the industrial revolution like that's you can't that's so much change and that's so cool to think about but it's even cooler to think about what if you like picked up dt Bly and threw him in 2022 and like how would you talk to him about anything that we do today like literally anything a cell phone i think he might know what a telephone is but Obviously, he'd know what a telephone is and a telegraph. But how do you explain a cell phone? How do you explain the internet? How do you explain SpongeBob SquarePants to Delos Thurman Bly? I, you'd have to start at the absolute ground. You'd have to start with, like, World War I to talk about modern politics. And even then, you might have to talk about the Spanish-American War, which was a major thing for America that he died just before, basically. Imagine, obviously, all the technology that exists now that is so far removed from the technology of then. Think about, you know, plasma screen televisions. Um, any mode of transportation. Any mode of communication. Like... I don't want to belabor this point because people already talk about it a lot, but, like, he would have the ultimate back-in-my-day arguments. Another thing that I like to think about when looking back at his life compared to today is he lived through the Civil War. What did he think about that? He lived in Kentucky, which was a border state. It had slaves, it had Southern sympathizers, but it ultimately stayed with the Union arguably because of federal force. However, Captain Bly had another nickname, Yankee Bly. Remember, he was born in New York. Was he called Yankee Bly just because he was born in New York, or was he called Yankee Bly because of what he thought and believed and said? 
And then there's his Jesse James conflict. Some people don't know this, but Jesse James committed crimes, sometimes, dressed in Ku Klux Klan gear. Uh, a lot of Jesse James's motive for committing crime was the belief that as a Southerner, he was entitled to take back some of what was taken from the South. So that's part of, again, why Missouri was going to give him amnesty. Missouri was a pretty Southern state. They were a border state. They never, I think they did officially leave the Union at one point, but it was different from how the other states left the Union and um, it means, essentially, I'm rambling, Missouri was a southern sympathetic state, which means that they would have been more sympathetic to Jesse James and his cause, and his, um, and would try to defend Jesse James's um, blamelessness. D.T. Bly being on the opposite side of that argument kind of suggests that he disagreed with Jesse James and Missouri. So I I look at these things and I hope that he was anti-slavery. That would be really nice. <laughs> that I could think highly of this member of my family without having to accept that he could have been okay with slaves. Um, I'm not going to go so far as to say that he wasn't racist. I'm sure he was racist. He might have been less racist than the average person in the 1800s, but saying he was anti-slavery is enough of a deduction. In conclusion, I'm related to an interesting person. And you are too. And I encourage everybody watching this to find that person and talk about them. I'm not telling you to make a YouTube video and upload it and put it on the Louisville, Kentucky subreddit and it could be taken down because they could think it's self-promotion. I hope they don't. But what I am saying is explore your family tree and find cool people because there's a lot of cool people if you know where to look. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to and have a great day. Bye-bye.